This exercise will be a strong reference point in the nation's history. Nigeria again presents self for assessment in African peer review exercise. The federal government has significantly increased our national capability in the area of maritime turbulence. Fight against sea piracy boosted. Falcon Eye joins the Nigerian Navy platforms. These nominees are not representing states. They are national commissioners representing geopolitical zones. Plus, Senate rejects Loretta Onoche, OK's five as INEC national commissioners. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Ian Ray John. Adiola Komiakere joins me from Lagos. Nigeria has pledged continued support for the African peer review mechanism process in the country in view of its tremendous benefits to good governance and democracy. President Muhammadu Buhari gave the assurance at a formal launch of the second self-assessment report of the country and flag off of the validation exercise across the six geopolitical zones of the country. State House correspondent Adam Usambu has the report. President Muhammadu Buhari presents Nigeria's self-assessment report to members of the lead panel to formally kickstart the second review mission in the country. This is the first African peer review mechanism member state in West Africa to undertake the exercise aimed at promoting good governance and socio-economic development. This exercise will be a strong reference point in the nation's history, a source of courage and positive drive for the initiative that is aimed at consolidating the strides of this present administration. This administration has been very supportive and will continue to support the African review mechanism process in Nigeria, knowing the importance of the process, which enhances transparency and good governance strengthens our democracy, identifies and addresses critical challenges as well as promotes all inclusiveness. Describing the review as timely and handy, President Buhari says the APRM process is an attempt to build on and seek accelerated implementation of continental initiatives aimed at achieving the Africa we want. I urge us all to deliberate and come up with more vital strategies, mechanisms and measures that would enable diligent implementation of the new national program of action for accelerated economic growth and sustainable development in Nigeria and Africa. The lead panel member for the country review mission, Dr. Abdulli Jane, appreciates Nigeria for braving itself to be reviewed despite the COVID-19 pandemic, which he says is further proof of the country's commitment to the APRM process. We applaud your ongoing efforts, your tirelessly ongoing efforts, Mr. President, to combat corruption. However, Mr. President, the issue of, of insecurity continues to be a major challenge. We have no doubt that Nigeria will overcome these unprecedented challenges under your able leadership. The national coordinator, Aouda Nepat Nigeria, Gloria Okobundu, salutes President Muhammad Buhari for his transparency, courageous leadership, consenting to the conduct of the country's second review mission and consistency in achieving the desired goals. Mr. President, sir, we cannot thank you enough for the trust reposed on us and the governing council of APRM to coordinate this great project. The agency will leave no stone unturned to ensure that a smooth process is attained with the kind continuous support of our dynamic president. The second review mission is expected to be concluded on the 20th of this month, after which the report will be drafted for presentation to the heads of state and government in the APRM Forum Summit due to hold early next year. 
from the State House, Adam Usambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari says Nigeria will offer the best support possible towards ensuring that the Republic of Cameroon remains an indivisible country. This was while receiving an audience, Mr. Felix Mbayu, a special envoy from President Paul Bia of Cameroon. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports. Nigeria and Cameroon, President Muhammadu Buhari says, share historical ties and common borders which make it imperative for the two countries to look out for each other's well-being. His administration, he explains, is very clear about the value of good neighborliness and will therefore remain steadfast at ensuring a stable Cameroon. Cameroon, which offered Nigeria the needed support during the civil war, is now being confronted by separatist agitation spearheaded by Ambazonian movement. The federal government, he promised, is committed to ensuring an indivisible Cameroon, a tax he believes is also in the greater interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. Mr. Felix Mbayu, who is also the minister-designate in charge of cooperation with the Commonwealth, said President Bia is happy with the role Nigeria continues to play in Africa, noting that the two neighboring countries share not just borders and historical ties, but also common challenges. These challenges border on particularly security, and as he explained, it is incumbent on the two countries to find common solutions. The special envoy said President Bia looked forward to a situation in which Nigerian territory would not be available for the Ambazonian movement to destabilize Cameroon, as some people are taking advantage of some crises in the two English-speaking parts of Cameroon to break the country apart. He congratulated Nigeria on the recent arrest and repatriation of Namdikanu, leader of IPOP, through the collaboration of some national security agencies and the Interpol. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And still in the State House, President Muhammadu Buhari has formally received the report on the National Security Summit convened recently by the House of Representatives. The report was presented by Speaker Femi Bajabuyamila at a brief ceremony attended by principal officers of the House, relevant ministers, service chiefs and other stakeholders. The President commended the lawmakers for their show of support and commitment towards addressing the nation's security concerns. He promised that the report will be studied for necessary action. President Buhari, who described Nigeria as a lucky country, despite the challenges, said he will continue to serve the country conscientiously and to the best of his ability. Speaker Femi Bajagbia Miller, who thanked the president for endorsing the security summit, said the report is a product of inputs by traditional rulers, scholars, independent thinkers and security chiefs. The document, he further explained, contains seven recommendations that require legislative action and about 19 that will be implemented by the executive. I believe that many of the recommendations, both the legislative and the executive, once implemented, will go a long way to resolving some of the issues if not all, some of the issues uh, that pervade the, our society in terms of security, I believe you saw the service chiefs here, you saw all the security agencies here present. That is an indication of how serious it was a show of force, that this is a security matter. Everybody must be involved. And that's what Mr. President brought here today. He brought his whole security team. And to me, that gives me inspiration. It gives the leadership inspiration. And we believe that that alone is a sign of good faith. And still on security, part of the report of the security summit submitted to the president by the House of Representatives is a proposal on the setting up of a special unit under the mobile police. The personnel, it says, are to be trained and subsequently deployed, a thousand each to all states to further combat insecurity. National Assembly correspondent Namiali reports on this and other issues considered during plenary Tuesday. We felt that the House had to intervene, and intervene, think outside the box, and intervene in ways that could assist or support the government of the day and the executive in providing solutions to what had become a very difficult situation 
with the Nigeria. The 19 points recommendation from the 150 member Special Committee on National Security, chaired by the Speaker Femi Baja Piamila, is the outcome of the Security Summit held in May 2021, during which stakeholders made submissions on the menace of insecurity in Nigeria. Other suggestions from the summit adopted by the House include the possible use of private defense contractors for targeted security operations such as terrorism and insurgency. Other features as plenary include the second reading of a bill to establish communal farms in all local government areas of Nigeria and a bill to establish Federal University of Technology or your state. Among resolutions adopted are a call on authorities to do something about the free fall of Nigeria's currency, an appeal on authorities to take mitigating measures against impending flood in Jigao State and the need to harness China clay in Akwaibom State. In 2018, China's clay ranked 69th in the world's greatest traded goods as it made an aggregate trade of $2.29 billion. The House also urged the police to be professional in handling the suspected murder case against a student of the University of Lagos. The Deputy Speaker of the Malawi Parliament, Aisha Mambu, was at the House of Representatives on an official visit from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. Similarly, President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed the need for all strategic institutions to collaborate towards securing the nation's territory. The president, in a message delivered by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo at the inauguration of the Falcon I system project of the Nigerian Navy, says the administration has demonstrated in various ways its determination to the safety of the country. State House correspondent Didi Unifadi has more. The Falcon I system is a state-of-the-art surveillance facility that incorporates various sensors located along the nation's enormous coastline, such as radars, long-range electro-optic systems with thermal or night vision capability. The Falcon I system will serve as a force multiplier for the nation's naval platforms tasked to effectively secure the maritime environment. It will also enable the Nigerian Navy to effectively combat any maritime crime that could disrupt the conduct of maritime trade. So given our economic aspirations and our commitment to international trade, ensuring the security of shipping lanes within the proximate uh, waters is in our national interest. It is estimated that Nigeria loses about $26.3 billion annually to various forms of criminality, particularly piracy and sea robbery. The Buhari administration, he says, has demonstrated a clear commitment to building the capacity of strategic institutions to secure coastal waters and the precincts of the country's maritime neighborhood. The federal government has significantly increased our national capabilities in the area of maritime surveillance and criminal interdiction within our territorial waters. It is clear that this administration has invested substantial resources in steadily building our sovereign capacity for total spectrum dominance of our maritime environment. And on behalf of um, uh, Mr. President, I wish to urge all the relevant strategic institutions and stakeholders to collaborate in the pursuit of this all-important endeavor in the national interest. Primarily meant to enhance the Nigerian Navy's operations with a lot of successes already recorded in reducing criminality within the maritime domain. The satellite aspects of the automatic identification system of Falcon Eye alignment extends beyond Nigerian waters to Cote d'Ivoire at the west, Cameroon at the east, and Angola at the southeast. The intelligence system gives the Nigerian Navy unique capabilities for detecting suspicious targets within the EZ, as well as real-time intelligence analysis. The Vice President commended the officers, men and women of the Nigerian Navy for their service in various theaters and expressed gratitude of the nation and the resolute support of the administration. From the naval headquarters in Abuja, Jide Onifade, NJ News. Let's take our first break now to stay with us. He's not my real friend. But you already know this, Lera Darling. Yes. For after 25 years. She 
just told me who my real father is. from as low as 50 naira for one hour. Simply dial star triple seven hash. The Honourable Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, will on Thursday, 15th July 2021, inaugurate the reconstituted governing councils of 19 universities and four inter-university centres. Venue, Idris Abdul Kadri Auditorium, National Universities Commission, number 26, Aguinyi Rossi Street, Maitama, Abuja, time 11 a.m. The documentation of chairmen and members of council shall precede the event at 10 a.m. The governing councils of federal universities of agriculture are to be inaugurated at a later date. Architect Sonny Chomo, permanent secretary, announcer. Reuters Foundation Old Students Association, Rofusa, felicitates with their father and benefactor, His Excellency Dr. Ole Anai Reuters Akoracha, GCSI OON, on the well deserved occasion of his coronation as the Maga Al Hering Hausa from the revered Daura Emirate and conferred on him by the Emir of Daura, His Royal Highness Alaji Dr. Umar Farooq Umar, CON. Sir, this rare honor, which signifies the great giver to the Hausa people, is a culmination of your selfless, unrelenting, and great humanitarian activities to over 25,000 indigent children, particularly in northern Nigeria, Nigeria and Africa at large, and also your sustained and unalloyed solidarity to the leadership and activities of His Excellency, President Muhammadu Buhari. Thank you, dear Daddy, for giving us back our humanity as we pray for heavenly blessings and mercies upon you and all that you stand for. Thank you once again, and congratulations, sir. The Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chiwike Rotimi Amechi, and the Honorable Minister of State for Transportation, Senator Gbemisola Rukaya Saraki, cordially invites the general public and stakeholders in the transport sector to the groundbreaking ceremony of Kano Kaduna Rail Corridor by the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR. Date, Thursday, 15th July, 2021. Time, 10 a.m. Venue, Zawachiki, Dawakin Kudu LGA, Kano State. Dr. Magdalena Jani, Permanent Secretary. Announcer. His Excellency the Executive Governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduja OFR, on behalf of the government and good people of the state, warmly welcomes the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, to Kano, the Center of Commerce, for a one-day working visit. During the visit, Mr. President will perform the following functions. Groundbreaking ceremony of Kano Kaduna Standard Gauge Railway Line at Zawachiki, Dawakin Kudu Local Government Area, and commissioning of Dengi Three Layer Interchange Bridge at Zaria Road by Zoo Road in the Metropolis. You are most welcome to Kano, Mr. President. Marhaba Lali, announcer, Kano State Government. Since 2015, the Buhari administration has been quietly executing a revolution in infrastructural development of Nigeria. Roads, railways, airports, bridges in massive numbers, never known before in the country. Now, Business Hallmark Public Policy Forum unveils these historic achievements to the world in a special town hall meeting. Theme, Nigeria's infrastructure revolution, road to a new future, featuring champions of infrastructural development. Mr. Chibike Rutimiyamechi, Mr. Babatundi Raji Fashala, Senator Hadi Sirika, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, Dr. Kai Defiami, Engineer David Omahi, Dr. Godwin Amefele, Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Dr. Herbert Mwiwe, Chairman, His Excellency Chief John Odige Oyegu, Special Guest of Honor, Mr. Boss Mustafa, date Thursday, July 29, 2021. Venue, the Sheikh Adwa Center, Abuja, time 11 a.m. RSVP, Sir Chief Mark Wabara. It's big, it's historic. The Joint Committees on Power and Privatization and Commercialization invites key stakeholders to an investigative hearing in respect of the planned privatization of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company Power Plants. Date, Wednesday, 14th July 2021, time 1 p.m. 
Venue Conference Room 034, House of Representatives Wing, National Assembly, Abuja. Invited stakeholders are expected to submit their submission to the Joint Committee Secretariat. For more inquiries, please contact the Joint Committee Clerk, Engineer Magaji Dao Aliu, Chairman, Joint Committee Announcer. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Artificial intelligence and community participation have been identified as possible solutions to banditry and kidnapping. These were part of the submissions of guests at the second Shikamfi Intelligence and Security Summit in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Governors of Borno and Niger states where bandits are on rampage, sitting among panelists at this annual security summit. Their task is to dissect security threats in parts of the country and to come up with practical solutions. A new dimension, when you kidnap farmers for ransom, maybe I can understand. But when you go to the extent where after kidnapping you burn down the farms, what is the motive? When you talk of reconciliation, what are you reconciling within the context of criminality? It is a clear case of engagement and suppression. We need to appreciate that the insecurity challenge is a national challenge. It's not a Zamfara problem, I think. It's not a Niger problem. Provided learning to Governor Zulu, the man at the ground zero of the counter-insurgency war. Apart from the urgent need to trace and track the security challenges, truncating socioeconomic activities. The remote causes of the threat must be identified and addressed. We allocate housing to the widows, provide conducive learning environment for their children, but most importantly, providing means of livelihood. The annual platform seeks to highlight the imperative of community-driven approach to strengthening security and to further upscale the capacity of states to meet their obligations in Abuja. Ismail Musa, NTA News. And in Kaduna State, the government is stepping up efforts towards tackling the incessant abduction of its citizens as it presents the second quarter security report to critical stakeholders. Muhammad Umar Ajinge reports that 84 bandits have been neutralized so far in the state. 774 persons, including minors and women, were kidnapped in Kaduna State within the period under review from April to June. But the security agencies are not all so sleeping. They are on their feet. Concerned by these figures of kidnapped victims, the state government convened this meeting to re-examine the details and listen to expert submissions on the way forward. I wish to appeal to all the citizens and residents of Kaduna State to remain law-abiding and to uphold peace in their communities as best as they can. On behalf of the state government, I apologize for all the pains and sorrow insecurity is causing our people, despite the sincere and consistent efforts and investments of hard-earned resources by the state government. Traditional rulers and other stakeholders have been asked to improve on their security alertness and help relevant agencies with the right intelligence to tackle all forms of criminality. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Jingi, NTA News. And away from Kaduna State now, President Muhammad Buhari has transmitted the 2022-2024 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper to the Senate for consideration. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sonkwa reports that the legislators have confirmed five out of seven nominees as INEC commissioners. Thus, plenary took off with President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, reading the 2022-2024 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper submitted by the executive. So the committee has uh, to work between today and tomorrow so that we're able to consider it on Thursday before we close for our annual recess. Immediately after that, consideration of the report of the Senate committee on the Independent National Electoral Commission on the screening of seven nominees as INEC commissioners followed. The committee recommended the confirmation of five nominees, Professor Muhammad Kala, Northwest, Professor Kunle Ajayi, Southwest, Saidu Ahmad, Northwest, Dr. Baba Bila, Northeast, and Professor Abdullah Hizuru, Northwest.
It stepped down the confirmation of Professor Sunny Adam for further investigation on the petition received against him, while that of Loretta Onochie was rejected. The Senate may wish to recall that in 2016, the S Senate passed, based on the recommendation of its INEC committee, confirmed Barista Me Obamuche Mbu from Delta State as a national commissioner in INEC of INEC who is still serving at present. Therefore, confirming the nomination of Mrs. Laureta Onochi from the same Delta State will be a violation of federal character principles. These nominees are not representing states. They are national commissioners representing geopolitical zones, that, even though it's not in the constitution, but they are picked from certain parts of the country. Consideration of reports continued with the passage of the National Emergency Medical Services Agency Establishment Bill, sponsored by Senator Ibrahim Oloriabwe, and the Electoral Offenses Commission Establishment Bill, sponsored by Senator Abubakar Kiari. When passed into law, it will reduce the number of deaths and casualties resulting from victims not receiving quick and quality response and care. Five bills passed first reading, including the Central Bank of Nigeria Act Amendment Bill, from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NT News. Now talking education, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board says parental aided examination malpractice is one of the emerging challenges faced by the board. JAMP Registrar Professor Ishak Oliyede said this during an oversight by the Senate Committee on Education, Basic and Secondary to the board's headquarters. Dayo Okunshola reports. Issues relating to the conduct of the examination dominated the discussion. Jump Registrar Professor Isaac Oluede highlighted the emerging challenges facing the board. Topmost include undue influence from parents, activities of dubious CBT centers, and indiscipline in admission process among some higher institutions. Examination malpractice, not in terms of students. Examination malpractice in terms of parents because they are the greatest problem. They are intrusion, particularly the mothers. Most of the problems we have, most of them are by mothers. Members of the committee in their assessment observed that basic education is an essential foundational base. Thus, JAMP's role as quality assurance check is very important. What we have seen as a committee oversighting this um, board, the agency, if this continues, definitely the educational sector in this nation will be improved. The committee assured the board of its legislative support to address other emerging issues. In Abuja, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. And in River State, Governor Yesem Wike has promised to uphold the trust bestowed on him by River's people, noting that the success of his administration is a manifestation of God's grace and faithfulness. The governor was speaking during the flag off of Ugu Ekburu Wakama Link Road in Ugu Bolo, local government area of the state. Ogedi Unyekwere completes the report. The Ugu Eporo Bogo Wakama Link Road at Tediama in Ugubolo local government area marks the end of the flag off of projects in the activities marking the second year anniversary celebration of the second tenure of the Wiki led administration. Governor Wiki said he will remain grateful to Rivers people. Wherever my state is, is where I will be. Because whatever happens in this world, I must come back there. Oh. Former governor of Ebonyi State, Senator Sam Egu, performed the groundbreaking. And I thank the governor for giving life to these people who have been under this serious deprivation. Of Senator George Sekebo commended the leadership qualities of Governor Wike in the delivery of projects, particularly the Ogu Ogo Mwakama Road that was considered impossible to execute for decades. The total length of the road upon completion will be 5.33 km and will have 5.8 km of drains. In Tediama, Ogubolo local government area of River State, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. Now, no Nigerian will be left out in any national project that is embarked upon by the federal government. 
This assurance by the Federal Character Commission is taking into consideration the need for sense of belonging and fair representation of the people in a scheme of things. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has details. Nigeria, rated the most populous country in Africa with an estimated 200 million people with various religious, ethnic and cultural diversities which no doubts make it unique. Towards the sustainability of national cohesion, the Federal Character Commission was established 22 years ago to ensure all inclusive governance in the country. We appreciate, Mr. President. Chairman of the Commission, Dr. Muhiba Dankaka, said the organization remains a pivotal institution of great magnitude towards strengthening national unity, which they must lead by example. We shall continue to pursue this mandate with all the vital and the constitutional provision as provided in our act. The Commission will bring out deliberate policies to make its own contribution to national discourse that promote peace and unity in the country. The executive chairman said the Commission is getting needed support from President Muhammadu Buhari and meeting the yearning and aspirations of all Nigerians is the only way to show their appreciation. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Let's now take a trip to Lagos, where Adeola is waiting to give us more news. Adeola, it's over to you. Thank you, Eri. Certification of trucks for meeting their minimum safety standard is now a requirement for assessing the ports in Lagos. The initiative, a collaboration between the Nigerian Ports Authority and the Federal Road Safety Corps, is not just limited to addressing road traffic crashes, but eliminating gridlock along the corridor. Michael Olaleye reports. At the heart of most accidents in Lagos is a deviant truck, questionable for violating guidelines. In April this year, Kadijaz was a victim of an articulated vehicle which discharged its contents on an approaching car. She survived to tell the tales, but not too many are so fortunate. In fact, the count is endless and they stimulated the aggressive implementation of the minimum safety standards by the Federal Safety Corps. If you look at our checklist of assessment, it's categorizing two stages to enable us to assess these vehicles properly. The first stage is visibility. Visibility talks about the ability of the vehicle to see and be seen. While the FRSC is still reflecting on its near success in reducing the rate of road carnage, caused by articulated trucks, the port community is incorporating SIM as precondition for trucks to be captured under the electronic call-up system. The Nigerian Post Authority's instinct is guided by the danger a failed truck constitutes to the environment. We need to make it to, uh, uh, very efficient, not just about um, deployment of infrastructure. We also need to ensure that everything is energized in such a way that you must have the right truck that is safe, confirmed to be safe, and if it is not safe, we'll tell you what is wrong with it. That's the only way to get the trucks faster. Now, if you have the cranes at the ports being able to pick the containers and load them on the trucks, the trucks are breaking down all over the place, you are still going to have the same congestion issues. This strategy is viewed as the much needed solution to the gridlock within the ports community, while efforts are on to generate more strategies to beef up safety and enhance the ease of doing business. In Lagos, Michael Walale. NT News. The Nigerian Army is repositioning its clerical staff to work in tandem with technological advancements in document security. This is the focus of a 2021 Nigerian Army Chief Clerks Convention with a the theme enhancing professionalism and responsiveness in Nigerian Army Chief Clerks to for optimal uh, performance uh, holding in Lagos. Hingino John Adams reports. Information, if not properly managed, can be catastrophic. The Nigerian army is not blind to this fact. That is why it is training custodians of its documents, the chief clerks, to equip them with rudiments of modern-day clerical work. For the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, 
who was represented, the training will contribute to the actualization of his vision for the Nigerian army. The workshop is meant to encourage the exchange of experiences and methods of conducting, coordinating your office towards identifying problems and finding solutions to challenges faced in the course of discharging your responsibilities. General Officer Commanding 81 Division believes that the training will make participants stronger administrative pillars of their various formations and units. Chief class are expected to be robust, endowed with quick thinking, analytical, and armed with problem-solving skills and, indeed, foresight. At the end of the training, participants are expected to be more proactive, effective, and efficient in discharging their duties for better document security and information management in the Nigerian army. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. We shall take another break. The network news will continue thereafter with Nyere in Abuja. Do stay. The Kogi State University Sangba is calling on all graduates from the year 2012 to pay for a digital certificate using Paystar Gateway from 1st July to 30th September 2021. Graduates who had already collected their certificate within the stated period and do not desire to obtain the digital certificate are not affected by this announcement. Graduates are to strictly adhere to this announcement. Sign Alhajidu A. Ahmed, Registrar, Announcer. Every day, different forces try to bring us down. But we never forget who we are. We are Africans. We have the power. Get plugged in. Let's go. Let's hear. It's scary, isn't it? Putting yourself out there. Ignoring the voices telling you you can't. Will you step aside or will you go for it? After all, what's the worst that could happen? So, keep trying. Don't stop. Believe in yourself and go for it. Aladana, available in many variants to nourish you every step of the way. Either fever or stomachache. I keep him away from junk food. He also feeds me apples. She says an apple a day <laughs> If you want to keep germs away, then also wash your hands regularly with Dettol Soap. Meaning? Germs and disease spread through the hand also. For this, use Dettol Soap. Dettol protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Dettol Soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Be Dettol Sure. Fresh liquid field gum to refresh your confidence instantly. Scent to fresh liquid field gum. Trust the freshness. See, nurse, she's saying she feels unwell despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just Jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. <coughs> God, Greg, you want to buy cough medicine again? Why haven't you gone for a test like I advised? Test? So that the hospital people will say I have COVID-19? No, 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 no. How about God, Greg? <laughs> Not all coughs mean you have COVID-19. COVID-19 cough and symptoms are different from other illnesses like tuberculosis. Uh, uh, Solomon, why don't you ever stay at your post? Why? <laughs> This your cough. You need to check ammo. When I had a bad cough, Madame told me to go for tuberculosis test. After the cough syrup didn't work, they discovered I had tuberculosis. After the free test, I was even treated for free. Now I'm fine. Solomon is right. Oga Greg, check ammo. Make you day sure. Because who no go, no, no go, no. Check that cough for tuberculosis. Check ammo, check ammo. 
cough is more than two weeks. It could be tuberculosis. TB tests and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 3340 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. will rush home for tasty meals prepared with Sonia Tomato Mix. Yummy! Times two! It's so good eating together with the family. Thanks to Sonia. Sonia Tomato Mix brings you together. Glad to have you back. The federal government and the authorities of the Economic Community of West African States Commission, ECOWAS, have signed a memorandum of understanding for the establishment of a national early warning response mechanism in the country. State House correspondent Jideo Nifade reports. Signing the memorandum of understanding on behalf of the federal government, Vice President Yemi Oshimbadu says Nigeria and other sub-regions are at a time where security threats are becoming more violent asymmetric and spreading faster than ever before and across border in nature, stressing that this is a moment for collaboration and increasing ways in sharing information and competence in order to confront the security challenges. Again, congratulate you and congratulate ourselves on uh, this uh, important innovation and to assure you of uh, our president, President Muhammad Buhari's commitment to this process and to ensure that uh, this early warning and response system is fully implemented. And we look forward to working with you uh, to ensure its full implementation. I've also noted uh, the specific requests that you've made and we'll, we'll definitely ensure that those uh, requests are processed. And um, we, just as you know, we're all very committed to ensuring that um, not only is ECOWAS able to fulfill it's objective because it's all is in our own interest. The vice president observes that following the 1999 convention, there has been tremendous progress, especially with respect to peacekeeping and being in a position to manage security threats and to provide platform for conflict management and resolution, stating that the clear expansion and the early warning response to include terrorism indicators is very important. President of the ECOWAS Commission, we expressed gratitude to the people of the country and the government for the steps taken so far for the establishment of the center. Says the Memorandum of Understanding is a clear demonstration of the country's commitment to enhancing the ECOWAS regional peace and security architecture and the early warning mechanism. Look forward to launching the National Center in Nigeria in the coming months. Best Rest assured that the ECOWAS Commission is determined to work with the Federal Republic of Nigeria in addressing challenges to peace and security to the establishment of a viable national early warning center. And the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Thank you, Jide. In order to encourage the growth of the Nigeria automotive industry, the federal government has directed that all vehicles to be purchased and that the approved federal government budget should be procured locally and from local assembly manufacturers. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed said this during the inauguration of automobile assembly plants in Newi, Anambra State. Ndem Kalu has details. The minister, who was in company of the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Utumba Adebayo, were conducted around the facilities to get first hand information on what is being manufactured locally in the automotive industry. The minister commended President Muhammad Buhari for consistently encouraging and supporting local manufacturing in Nigeria to assist in creating jobs and boosting the growth of the economy. She added that the ministry has put in place a vehicle registration portal to ensure that all vehicles imported or manufactured locally is captured in a central database in order to curtail smuggling 
and leakages in government revenue. Mr. President had directed a review of the policy to ensure greater output in the sector. This is in line with Nigeria's philosophy to harness optimally. The commissioning of this plan further underscores the focus of the management of military vehicles towards supporting the federal government's industrialization agenda. This great company has demonstrated immense strength in the Nigerian economy and deserves every support it can get from all of us. The event attracted stakeholders in the manufacturing industries from Newi, Ndamkalo, NTN News. Meanwhile, Nigeria is engaging local and international investors to showcase investment opportunities aimed at deepening economic reforms and encouraging inclusive growth. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo at a one-day webinar organized by the Bureau of Public Enterprises along with the Nigerian Exchange Group and the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission says government is committed to the success of the nation's economic recovery and growth plan. Bosede Abel reports. The pathway to recovery requires effective and deliberate strategies to succeed. This session is a demonstration of collective effort to showcase investment opportunities available in Nigeria, particularly in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences on the economy. A critical component of the government's income plans this year is privatization, and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says government is working with key stakeholders to identify investment impediments and level them in line with the ease of doing business. That is the BPE, on behalf of the federal government, as the counterparty on all infrastructure projects being developed on a PPP basis, whilst the ICRC will be the regulatory agency for PPP transactions with powers to inspect, to supervise, and monitor the projects and processes in order to ensure compliance with relevant laws, uh, policies, and regulations. It was an opportunity to fuse ideas that would enhance quality and service delivery long after privatization of government-owned enterprises in line with international best practices. You know, from our own, uh, you know, schedule uh, for the current fiscal year, uh, the total number of projects that we are putting into the investment space uh, should be able to generate uh, a proceeds in the region of about 500 billion naira. The investment webinar availed policymakers the opportunity to present the low-hanging fruits for private sector investors to leverage as drivers of economic development. In Abuja, Bosse de Ebo, NTN News. In other news, 1,000 youths and women in Darazu and Ganjawa local government areas of Bochi state have received vocational kits and cash in the second phase of the Kaura Economic Empowerment Program, KEEP. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that the program is set to engage at least 10,000 youths and women across the state. Having flagged up the empowerment program in Gamawa and Zaiki local government areas last month, youth and women in Darazo and Ganjua LGAs have now taken their turn as beneficiaries of the Kaura Economic Empowerment Program, mainly in the areas of comparative advantage. Beneficiaries in these LGAs received grinding machines, provisions, groundnuts and palm oil making machines, poultry items, and cash. Our government is irrevocably committed to the upliftment of their economic condition and making sure that we provide palliation in a manner that we are doing it with all humility and so that they can have some circle and support. I therefore appeal for their continued support, understanding and cooperation towards the realization of this noble objective. So far, the state government has set aside 75 million naira for the empowerment program in each of the local government areas in the state. In Bauchi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTN News. Similarly, the North East Development Commission has trained and graduated over 300 youths in ICT repairs under its entrepreneurship training program in Jalingo. An infectious disease laboratory center for testing COVID-19 sample jointly constructed by the commission and Taraba State Government was also inaugurated during the event. Joseph Zana Gambo reports. 300 youths in Taraba State have undergone an eight weeks rigorous training 
under the entrepreneurship program of the commission with specialization in ICT, smartphone maintenance, bookkeeping, and computer fundamentals. Managing Director, Northeast Development Commission, Mohamed Goni Alkali says the region is lagging behind in the areas of skills and entrepreneurship development due to activities of insurgents, hence the need for the commission to step in and fill the gap. The overall objective of the NEDC IC program is to improve access to IT resources within the Northeast zone and empower the population with the necessary vocational skill and tool. Governor Darius Ishaku, who appreciated the Northeast Development Commission for the gesture, promised proper maintenance and utilization of the Commission's project domiciled in the state. Let me pat you on the back for a job well done and assure you that in Taraba State you will get the maximum cooperation possible. A state-of-the-art ICT resource center set up by the Northeast Development Commission at the Taraba State University as well as an infectious disease laboratory center constructed by the state government in partnership with the commission for the testing of COVID-19 samples were also inaugurated during the event. In Jalingu, Joseph Zana Gambu, NTA News. Time for another quick break. Please stay. The petroleum industry bill and its prospects for Nigeria. What are the critical issues involved? Find out on the NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, every week at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Join us. Um, well, it's history, so either you know it or you don't. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, Putting your best. The military years were a disaster. Smoldering effects, all that, is what we are trying to cure. Go TV Biggie Ghost promo, don't learn. Better Diggy levels, better grooves, no hard at all. On top Go TV. Make you not miss this a woof as Go TV price don't go down low. For inside Biggie Goals promo. Now, if you fit get Go TV decoder, Go Tenner with one month max subscription. Will be 9,500 naira before for 6,900 naira now. Hey, we see discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross your leg, watch BB Niger drama and shows for Africa Magic and International Series. Then Biggie Goals. Promo now for you. Better discount. Go get your own now now for only 6,900 naira to enjoy max levels for Go TV. This offer no go to tell. Go TV. Love it. <laughs> It's now time to talk sports with uh, Badi Adeleye. Badi, we hear the Tigers are doing uh, wonders. What's your prediction for tonight? Oh, we're, we expect them to beat Australia because they've been doing so well lately. All right, welcome to Sports Update. Let's begin with mini football as Libya picked a quarterfinal ticket at the second Africa mini football Cup of Nations in Ibadan earlier this evening after hammering Zambia 4-0 in their third group game play.